Are you tired of feeling like your car's engine is speaking a different language? You turn the key, and all you hear is a pathetic groan or a disappointing click. You're convinced that your ride has a mind of its own, and it's determined to make your life miserable. Well, it might just be because your ECU is dead, and it needs a little CPR. In a nutshell, the ECU is like the brain of your car's engine. It's the tiny computer that controls all the critical functions that keep your car running smoothly. Without it, your car would be like a headless chicken, running around aimlessly without any sense of direction or purpose. So, why is the ECU so important? Well, it's responsible for a plethora of tasks, including controlling the fuel injection system, monitoring the engine's performance, and adjusting the air or fuel mixture and even regulating the emissions. In other words, it's the superhero that keeps your car's engine in check and prevents it from turning into a gas-guzzling, polluting, spewing monster. However, even superheroes have their kryptonite, and for the ECU, it's a bad case of malfunction. When your ECU goes on the fritz, it can cause a host of problems, including engine misfires, poor fuel efficiency, and worst of all, failure to start. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, then it's time to do some ECU detective work. In this video, we'll show you how to diagnose a bad ECU and bring your car back to life. No defibrillator required. We'll guide you through the steps you need to take to determine if your ECU is the culprit behind your engine problems. We'll also provide you with essential tips and tricks to get your car running like new. So, if you're tired of feeling like your car is running on fumes, Join us as we uncover the secrets of a bad ECU and learn how to revive your car's engine. By the end of this video, you'll be able to diagnose a bad ECU like a pro and impress your friends with your newfound automotive knowledge. Trust us, your car will thank you for it. Alright, let's dive into the nitty gritty of preparing for the diagnosis. As we mentioned earlier, the ECU is responsible for controlling many aspects of your vehicle's engine from fuel injection to emissions control. So, diagnosing a bad ECU requires some technical know-how and a few essential tools. First up, let's talk about the multimeter. This handy device is essentially an electronic measuring tool that can measure voltage, resistance, and current. It's a crucial tool for testing the inputs and outputs of the ECU, allowing you to identify any problems that might be affecting the engine's performance. Imagine it as a stethoscope for the engine of your automobile. It can assist you in identifying the problem's root cause. Next, we have the wiring diagrams. These diagrams provide a map of the electrical system of your car, showing you how the various components are connected to each other. They are essential for identifying any wiring issues or potential shorts that may be affecting the ECU's performance. Think of them like a treasure map that can help you find the X that marks the spot of your ECU's problem. Now, if you have access to a diagnostic scanner, that's even better. A diagnostic scanner is a device that plugs into the OBD2 port of your car and communicates with the ECU to retrieve error codes and data. It can help you identify specific problems with the engine that might be related to the ECU. It's kind of like a supercomputer that can tell you things about your car's engine that you just can't find out any other way. But before you start poking around the engine bay, it's essential to take some safety precautions. As we mentioned earlier, make sure to disconnect the battery before working on the ECU. This will prevent any accidental shocks or damage to the electrical system. Also, be sure to wear protective gloves and eyewear to protect yourself from any potential debris or electrical hazards. What do you think of the video so far? Let us know in the comment section below. Hopefully, you're enjoying the content. If you want more videos like this one, remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's go back to the video. It's time we get down to the nitty gritty of making a diagnosis. Don't worry, we'll lead the way as a GPS would on a long trip. First up, let's start by checking the ECU's power and ground connections. This is important because the ECU isn't getting enough power or the ground connection is faulty. It won't be able to communicate with your car's other systems. Consider it like a phone without a charger or a signal. 
you won't be able to use it. So, how do you check these connections? Well, you'll need to consult your car's wiring diagrams to identify the specific power and ground connections for your ECU. Once you've found them, you can use your trusty multimeter to test them for voltage and continuity. If you find any issues with these connections, you may need to repair or replace them. Next, it's time to test the ECU's inputs and outputs. This involves checking the signals that the ECU is receiving from various sensors and components, as well as the signals it's sending out to control those components. Again, your wiring diagrams will be your trusty sidekick in identifying these inputs and outputs. Once you've identified them, you can use your multimeter to test them for voltage and continuity. If you find any issues with these signals, it could be a sign of a faulty ECU. However, it's also possible that the problem could be with the sensor or component itself. So you may need to do some further testing to pinpoint the issue. Finally, if all else fails, it may be time to check the ECU's internal components. This involves opening up the ECU and examining the capacitors, resistors, and other components for any signs of damage or wear. This step requires some technical know-how, so if you're not comfortable with it, it's best to leave it to the professionals. In summary, diagnosing a bad ECU involves checking the power and ground connections, testing the inputs and outputs, and potentially examining the internal components. It can be a tricky process, but with the right tools and knowledge, you'll be able to identify and fix any issues with your car's ECU. And who knows? Maybe your newfound technical prowess will earn you some bragging rights among your car-obsessed friends. Well, folks, we've reached the end of our journey through the world of ECU diagnosis. We've learned a lot today, from the importance of checking power and ground connections to the thrill of exploring the inner workings of an ECU. But most importantly, we've learned a proper diagnosis can save you a lot of money in the long run. Sure, it may be easier to just replace the whole ECU and call it a day but that can cost you a pretty penny. By taking the time to diagnose and fix the specific issue, you'll be saving yourself a lot of money and headaches down the road. So, if you found this video helpful, don't be afraid to hit that like button, leave a comment, and share it with your fellow car enthusiasts. And if you're still not confident in your ability to diagnose or repair your vehicle's ECU, that's okay too. Remember to seek professional help if you need it. There's no shame in admitting when you need a little extra help. And with that, I'll leave you with one final thought. The next time you're driving down the road and you hear that sweet sound of a properly functioning engine, take a moment to appreciate all the hard work that went into diagnosing and fixing any issues. And perhaps, give your car a small pat on the dashboard. It's been through a lot with you. Thank you for watching Car Computer Exchange. And... We'll see you in the next one.